The stories of Hurricane Maria evacuees, like we just met, have also become familiar to Elizabeth Roman, a reporter with Mass Live and The Republican. She's reported about the need for federal, state, and local assistance for Puerto Rican residents in this region. Roman met many of those people through Betty Medina Lichtenstein, the executive director of Enlace de Familias in Holyoke. Enlace is an aid organization that's been a central place for those residents to get help. Families um, started to arrive in Western Mass on October the 5th. Um, most of them were for emergency relief, um, very sickly, um, elders. Um, and they arrived, some of them with suitcases, some of them just with the clothes on their backs. Um, and the unknown, right? Strange land, uh, different climate, um, different environment, um, and then trying to figure all that out little by little. Elizabeth, you've done a lot of reporting on this for Mass Live and The Republican and worked with Betty's organization to understand stories of some people. Um, Lillian Cotto, she's working with you now. You met her. How did you learn of her story? I met her at the front desk. She was this really you know, sweet woman, smile on her face. And I just assumed she worked, you know, at Enlace. I had no idea that she was a new evacuee uh, and she was looking for something to do. Her daughter, I think she has a daughter, mm -hmm. was in school and she didn't want to stay home. She wanted to contribute in some way and she felt that, that this was the way she could do it, that when people arrived, she could greet them, say hello. And while she was dealing with her own, you know, suffering and losing everything back home because her story is quite dramatic. What did, um, what did she tell you about how and why she left Puerto Rico? Um, her home was destroyed. She had a business. She had 10 employees, I believe, uh, and a hair salon. Mm -hmm. And the business was, you know, was destroyed as well. So she had no job. You could tell it was just a very traumatic experience for her. And she just really wanted her daughter to be safe and her, you know, and then to have a better situation, so she came here. So she's an example of one of the many families in the community now whose students who, who came here with their children and become students in either Springfield, Holyoke, West Springfield, into those school systems in this region. How, what's happening with the school system and the integration of these students, specifically in Springfield and Holyoke right now? So in Springfield, the latest numbers are 613, so 613 students, and they've honestly done a really great job of it. I, mean, I don't know how Betty would know more about Holyoke, but in Springfield, they haven't had to hire any new teachers. The kids have been integrated into their neighborhood schools based on whoever, you know, whatever relative they're living with. McKinney Vento is a program that um, helps homeless students, so a lot of the funding has come through there, but the governor has allotted $15 million for the entire state, and Springfield and Holyoke will see a good number, a good chunk of that, to reimburse them for each pupil that has been taken in. I think that the, that the districts that are struggling the most with um, the self-evacuees are those that have not been able to increase their capacity with bilingual staff. I think that that's been the struggle more than anything else. Um, so like Springfield and Holyoke has- Already have a lot of Spanish speakers in their system. So they have not had to really bring in uh, or hire, have a need to hire um, people to be able to be working with the families and with the students. I think when it comes to Chicopee and Westfield and Northampton and other districts where there are uh, large hotel populations, those are the ones that are really struggling. Let's talk about housing. I know there's some questions right mm -hmm. now about FEMA, the deadlines, whether or not vouchers will be extended. Is your organization able to help them find housing? So it's complex. In Puerto Rico, you can rent a home, a private home, for less than $400 a month. You come to Massachusetts, $400 does not even come close. Mm -mm. Um, the housing stock in Massachusetts is also very slim. We have many homeless families in the state of Massachusetts that have been born and raised here, never mind when we have um, a disaster population coming in. Um, so that's been a real struggle for families. The other pieces is also employment. Some people like Liliana, um, as we spoke about earlier, she lost her business. Someone like that is eligible for FEMA unemployment. It isn't a lot, but at least it gets them into an apartment. People who are coming here who are self-evacuees are doctors, they're nurses, they're, they're estheticians, you know, they're professional working people coming to a United States, you know, from a U.S. territory to another place in the U.S., is there any type of, are there inroads being made on whether or not these credentials can be certified here in Massachusetts or elsewhere? The um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, granted a waiver um, so that teachers from Puerto Rico, um, because we have the students, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so if you have the students, you're going to need the teachers. And so teachers have been given a waiver and are being assisted um, in getting their licenses, their Massachusetts license um, for certification. It is a very different diaspora than what we've seen in the past. Um, and so that it would behoove us as a community to really take this as an opportunity 
opportunity to be able to integrate um, very highly skilled professionals that are here now. Elizabeth, I read a story uh, recently about $180,000 that was raised by a local organization. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to me because that money is being put back into the Puerto Rican community directly. Can you tell us a bit about that story? Yeah, so it's the Western Massachusetts United for Puerto Rico Coalition, which essentially brought together service organizations, politicians, the mayors of Holyoke, Westfield, and Springfield. People did a bunch of uh, fundraisers over time. They raised $180,000. $80,000 went to the United Way, which was used, you know, to double it up. And... Uh, the New North Citizens Council, which is the Welcome Center in Springfield, and then Lasse, which is the Welcome Center in Holyoke, each received, I believe it was 60000 from that? Um, yes. And then, so the other 100000 has gone directly to Puerto Rico, to 10 different organizations, got $10,000 each, to work on everything from buying construction materials, to getting people solar panels and water kits, to getting electricity back in, um, in little communities, to refurbishing a school and turning it into a laundromat and a coffee shop. So they, they really thought really long and hard about how they wanted that money to be used. And it's really exciting because I know a lot of people in Western Mass wanted to help. And if they gave $5, if they gave $3, Freedom Credit Union held it all together until it was ready to go, and now it's been sent out. So if people are watching this now and want to help either in donating food or you know money or other aid or assistance, what should they do? Where should they turn? I think that the local organizations, the ones that are on the ground here um, in Western Massachusetts, New North Citizens Council, um, like Elizabeth said, and in Lasse, you also have the Springfield Family Resource Center, yeah, Gondara. Mm -hmm. They also have been assisting. There's many organizations that you know might not be seeing the bulk of the individuals, but that at the same time um, are helping those that are coming in through their doors. So, um, and Lasse has been very blessed also with the Western Mass uh, Food Bank. Mm -hmm. They've been bringing us two pallets a week, um, although our numbers have dropped somewhat from people arriving. Um, now it's about getting stable but um, we're still giving out food to those that are coming through and also those that are now moving into their apartments so that we could um, fill up those pantries a little bit.